And what a great story for a haunted ship. Uh, uh, we're getting festive this I, time. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not really a good haunted what ship What a great story. story. I, I mean, no, it's entirely appropriate, though. How? It's a Christmas it's theme It's entirely one. appropriate. It's entirely appropriate. It's entirely appropriate. Okay, fine. Oh, really uh, fine. Anyway, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry and Christmas. Christmas, all that stuff. Because this Who's is going to be not a holiday-themed story. This story takes place in the city of Porf, which we had done for the last story. It's the same, it's the same setting, same campaign, except this time, it was I was DMing, Jeremy was playing, and a couple of her, of her friends. There was a wizard, a halfling wizard, a halfling warlock. There was our mouse folk barbarian, our half orc fighter. Hey, okay, so just say no, those things kill you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> half, bar half mimic barbarian. No, half mimic bard. My bad. And our <laughs> Ghoul room. <laughs> so, they have a guild house and they're just like, wow, nothing's happening. And the guild master's like, hey, I know something cool that you guys can do. They're, every year around this time and at midwinter, just like Christmas, there is a festival. In Merry Port, Christmas. All about Chrysler. cheer and giving <laughs> gifts and spreading the love. It, spread the love, man. Just spread the love. Just like I'm doing now to all these poor innocent men. That's not love, that's death. <laughs> there is a difference. So, in this, they they go they go to Porf and they get there and they're like, oh, I, I guess they're not doing the festival yet. But our guildmaster said it's starting soon because nothing was happening. There was no festivities, no decorations, no music like it was promised, and it was just yeah, bullshit. Exactly, just like that. Completely desolate. So they go around, they look around, and they get to. Um, <coughs> they go talk to two people about this. They talk to the a magic sh a magic salesman in the magical capital. Of course, there would be a magic salesman and the high wizard. And both of them said, "Yeah, we really miss the festivities and the decorations and all that goes on around here. Can you guys figure out what's wrong with this?" And actually, the man at the magic forge was saying, "Hey, I have an idea." Yes. There is a there's something, a presence that comes by every now and then to check on how people are doing. Because near the nearing the end of the festival, a presence comes by and leaves gifts for those that have been exceptionally helpful and exceptionally nice and cheerful throughout the entire year. Special magical gifts. Magical gifts. <laughs> so it's like a so, magical Santa. If Santa was magical. Santa's already magic. You know what, Joey? How the fuck do you think he gets he gets everywhere in one night? Of course. Anyway, <laughs> in some mythologies it says that the night follows him because it, see, he maybe he, he follows the night. So he, science all, could also say that. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. So they eventually go over towards the uh, to the forest where this area where this happens, and they find that oh. There is a massive clearing here with a massive tree, and it's being taken over by imps, little little goblin things from the underworld. And they're like, "All right, let's kill these things. Let's go towards the tree." And they get they killed them all. They get in, they feel a magical aura come back around the tree, and they get inside, and they see that it's a house completely empty, only made of the wood, only made of the wood from the tree itself, with furniture and books everywhere, and <laughs> in the corner, the mouse folks like this. This section seems kind of bulged out. I'm gonna poke it, and he pokes it, and it all shifts. And as it all shifts, the entire thing begins to get up and stand up, and it's a tree ant. Oh no! You know, like tree beard from Lord of the Rings. I'm a tree. This. Oh, I'm a tree. And he begins to say to them, "Are they gone?" Are, they, are the imps gone? And they, they're like, yes, we, we took care of the imps. You're, it's all good. Why? Now, I'd imagine they first went, fuck! And then they probably went, yes, they're, they're gone. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. He oh, says, oh, yeah. oh thank, thank the lords. Uh, there, there still might be time. And so he explains to them how he is the denizen of this realm. And he is the one that brings by all the gifts and makes sure, ever, make sure everybody is all being nice and cheerful all throughout the year. And he says to them, I, I can't do that right now. My magic has been depleted. Could you do this for me? Can you bring back cheer to Porf? 
So he sends them on a quest. Oh, like, hell yeah. To go bring back the cheer and the festival to Porf. Wait a second, Porf is Jeremy's world, right? So does that this mean is, he's this DMing? Is, it's no, not, it's a full world. This is the, this is in the one where everybody DMs at a different time. Oh, okay. So they go back into Porf, they start doing illusion illusion magics, they start playing song, the bard gets up on a stage and plays songs, the warlock sells Christmas wreaths, there's lights everywhere, there's They've turned the torches different colors. They've created a massive Wait a second, illusion. wait a second. Chris, Chris, look. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kine! There for, a second, for a split second, Kine! <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Moving on. And you just immediately turn into a sub. All right. Oh my god, Waddle Dee's one too. Can I move? <coughs> oh, oh. You, do you, I think you just have to tap, don't you? Yes. Oh. That makes things anyway. a lot easier. Anyway, so... They begin to bring cheer back, they bring, begin to make sure everybody's having a great time. They create snow using a control weather spell. and the, the, They just want to make it like as festive as possible. Yeah, yeah the mouse folk, who's, like, who's very avid about his masculinity, is like, I, I'm, I'm tough, I'm gonna do this. Sees the snow and makes a constitution check, and just turns into a three-year-old. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, snow! <laughs> And just gonna be more falls festive back than all of you fucks! Falls back in it, dives around, makes a snowman. It's amazing. He wanted to build a snowman. Is what and as, the, as this happens, the earth begins to rumble. And they hear demonic voices. And a rift right in front of the central tower appears. And out comes a chain devil. With horns. A chain devil? A chain devil. I'm gonna imagine he's a devil in chains. A massive, a massive devil... With goat legs, uh, curled up horns, and two very long chains wrapped around his arms that he swings around. With Keep in mind, kids, in D&D there's multiple different types of devils. The more you know. Casey, can you give us a the more you know? The <laughs> more you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyway, so, he then begins to say... Oh my god. Whoa. Uh, see, he begins to <laughs> say something along no. the lines of, You need to stop this. I have power over this, and you need to stop. This is not what was supposed to happen. And while he's monologuing a little bit, while he's saying this stuff, the mouse folk gets a giant snowball. Takes Actually, no. He takes his snowman and throws it at him. Yeah, it was the snowman. The, the entire snowman. He just picks up the snowman and throws it at and him. Like, basically, I'd like to imagine that in the seconds while the snowman is flying, he's like, I'm walking through the end. <laughs> Well, basically, it was just like, guys, stop! I want everyone to be sad, and the little mouse folk was like, "Fuck you!" What <laughs> a best of fun time. time! And so they, and so everybody starts throwing snowballs at him, and he shouts, "Stop!" <laughs> he summons a bunch of imps, readies his chains, and everyone rolls for initiative. And it turns out they're fighting Krampus. Compass. For those of you who don't know, Krampus is a German mythology figure who's set to punish the naughty children on Christmas. And guess who was the only evil party member in that? Oh no. It was the the warlock. He was the only evil party member, and thus, who was the only one Krampus attacked? <laughs> oh. Dude, what the fuck? So throughout the entire fight, they were they were like shooting ice at him. They were stabbing Krampus, and no matter what, even if the warlock was just trying to run and hide, <laughs> he would always would, go after him. Krampus would throw you his chain. Naughty! Throw his chain with amazing accuracy and sweep him and grapple him. <laughs> Good. Oh my As god. As Krampus do. That is how the Krampus Eventually they had defeated Krampus, and after this, coming, riding into town is on a unicorn, or on a, a sleigh pulled by a unicorn is Kindleaf, the, the tree animal. But he's disguised this time as a bigger gentleman in a red coat because I had to put that in there. Of course. And he says to and he says, "Thank you very very much for helping me restore restore the festival, and I think you all deserve a reward." So he goes down the line and gives each of them a customized gift. And Except for the warlock. No, for the warlock, he gives a special ultimatum. He says, "Because of what you did, I'm going to tell. I'm going to ask you if you would like to serve my patron god instead of instead of your god of the old ones. If you would like to join me in serving Saint Nick 
and providing joy to the world. Whatever it takes to get on the nice list! I'm Jesus! Sorry. No, 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 wait. So are you telling me... Saint Nick is a lesser deity Saint in this Are world. you telling me that this tree and came to this warlock and said, Excuse me, are you familiar with the word with the word in the lo- uh, with the, of our Lord and Savior, Savior Saint, Saint Nicholas? Nicholas? Yes, yes, essentially. That's Good. exactly what he did. The the <laughs> the tree ant is essentially a paladin that worships Saint Nick. Nick. Good. Good. No, I'm glad though. I'm so stuck. the warlock said yes. I would, and because their their ultimate goal is to defeat Krampus, their ultimate goal is to stop Krampus from ruining things. Mm-hmm. So he became so a nice boy. He became a patron of Saint Nick, and his goal is now to defeat Krampus because Krampus is an asshole. <laughs> he sure is. Sure, sure. And that is how our adventurers restored peace and the festival back to the land of Porf. Uh, some of the items they got were a spell book that never gets dirty. It also had a custom spell in it called Summon Nutcrackers. <laughs> Wait, do they fight for you? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, oh, yeah. He, uh, he, Can like, he summons spells? Them? They could. Oh. They, they most certainly That's could. all I need. Summon Skullcrackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just the fucking Overwatch Zenyatta and Christmas skin. Exactly. Good. Except um, they're only about, like, two and a half feet tall. Fair yeah. enough. The one a little give and take. So there, he had, there was a spell called Summon Nutcrackers that was given out. There was a harp that whenever he played it, he could summon minor illusions around him to help tell the story. <laughs> uh, there was a, a snow globe given to the barbarian that, yes, when he shook it, there was a mini snow cloud that appeared him and, around him, and he got his own little personal snow flurry. Nice. But when he channeled it, he could also cast a spell called Snillox Snowball Swarm. <laughs> Of course. Oh my god, this sounds amazing. Oh, it's and a fantastic Did spot. they just have like all of these things for the rest of their campaigns? Oh, they're gonna have it for the rest of their for the rest of the games now. The rest of their lives. Because they they've been given these. They will never be able to get Because they were good boys this year. <laughs> there were some really there were some really <clears throat> nice items I had, I had given them. There was that was a fun one. I, I got really some enjoyed that. Fucking nutcrackers. You got nutcrackers that I got you. some fucking nutcrackers. <laughs> They're my best friends. So fucking good. Yeah, on his yeah, man, fucking up back, <laughs> on his turn, no best body. On his turn, he can command them to do different things during battle. Essentially, like a beast companion so, or a ranger, like a or just a familiar. Yeah, yeah, kind of. basically. Okay. So, so, yeah. Except much more permanent. Yeah. That was the that is the story about how they had how brought they cheer back from, to port. So it's literally the saved start, Christmas. Yeah, how, your, sense. how your campaign? How, how your party saved Christmas? And they had defeated Krampus. There was, a, there was another story that we could tell uh, the next one, maybe, uh, in the next video, of how a completely different party, inst- not at our college group, a long time ago when we first started playing d d actually saved Christmas. Good. Actually saved Christmas? Yes, like, it was, real I, 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 I didn't even like try to disguise it as like a multicultural, uh, just this world's version of it's just holiday. It's, no, it was it's just Christmas. Christmas. But, we'll tell that Next time, probably. Next time, probably. Next, next time, time, probably. What, next time, we're fighting this thing. Yeah, we're, this is taking extraordinarily long for this just one level. Because it's a fucking water level. No, it's a it's an auto scroll. Yeah, it was level. auto scroll. Casey didn't get to dictate the pace of it. Yeah. So that might be exactly why it's taking. Yeah, Casey kind of just like. Well, I, well, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna keep talking about this, the the interesting thing about the present I got, I I play a wizard and. Um, one of the things that's really important for wizards is their spellbook, because their spellbook determines basically how powerful they are. And one of the problems in D and D with wizard spellbooks is that they can actually get destroyed, like entirely. Oh. So I, so I had essentially given Jeremy a way to negate that, where it can be destroyed if someone goes in and like rips out all the pages and or burns like it. burns it. But if if it gets submerged in water, or if it gets mud all over it, the writing's not going to smudge, and it's not going to yeah. be destroyed that way. Basically, it can't tarnish. Essentially, it's laminated. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, it's an entirely laminated. Thank you, Chris. No <laughs> you completely fucking whiffed it. Chris is like, I have. It. I'll just, I'll just get it. Just, just, so I'll yeah, just... it was a, it was a really, it was a really fun adventure. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Well, and uh, we and we defeated Krampus. Of course. Because Krampus is an asshole. Alright, well next time on Brohive, next we'll talk about the other time Brohive. that Joey and Jeremy saved Christmas. That we saved Jeremy Christmas. Saved Christmas. <laughs> That's what that came out as. <laughs>
Next job, Rohan. We learned that the story about the heroes who saved Christmas named John Snap! John Snap! John Cena! And John Stamos! I heard John Snow. John Wolfgang? Okay.